Modern Warfare 2, and in particular the Warzone 2.0 Battle Royale experience was a big flop with fans. The recent release of Modern Warfare 3 has also been a controversial one, leaving much of the community divided. But the current trend is for everyone hyping up the new integration of Warzone more than a pop megastar dating your favourite NFL hero. With the integration due to happen on the 6th of December when Season 1 starts, I put some good hours in on the new game, levelling guns and getting a proper feel for it. So today I wanted to drop back into our Masra, potentially for one last time, while giving you a little insight into how it's all going to work, and specifically how the new Warzone experience might fare for you. Is the Verdansk experience coming back? And to an extent, I mean quite literally, are they bringing the Verdansk map back? Well, stay tuned to the end to find out. So to look forward at what might be good or bad about the new game, let's really quickly establish what was great and what was pants about Warzone 2. The first, the good. It moved Warzone onto the next-gen platform, delivering improved graphics, an FOV slider for console, improved anti-cheat, and it freshened things up with a whole new approach to gameplay and unique weapon customization. So some great things, not too bad. But for now, they're bad. Game audio was terrible, with players often getting run upon by enemies without any footstep audio whatsoever. The servers were regularly unplayable due to lag, combined with an incredibly fast TTK, meaning if you were caught out in the open on Almazra, you'd too often find yourself heading into the Gulag without any chance of outplay. And then, when you get to the Gulag, it would unfairly throw you in a random number generator by involving teammates and bots, so potentially teamed up with a bot against bots. Ideal. We mentioned it freshened things up with a whole new approach to gameplay and unique weapon customization, but in doing this, it also degraded the quality of life feel with a worse HUD, overly complicated user interface slash COD HQ debacle, and a weapon tuning system that took longer to master than the game itself. Arguably though, the worst change was nearly going full Tarkov Milsim, massively upsetting the balance of realism versus casual arcade experience that much of the COD fan base pitches up for. That just left everything feeling like you were trudging through treacle. You hear those first bullets come in, and it's like you're in a nightmare, back in year five, getting chased by Jamie Thornton. He wants your lunch money, but your legs won't work to get you out of there no matter how hard you try. No, Jamie, not my lunch money. I'll go hungry again, no! Uh, oh yeah, um, where was I? Oh, anyway, okay. So, in short, it felt like a support group for agrophobics. All nervously hiding in corners, not wanting to encounter people, rather than a fun first-person shooter where you want to get stuck in to win your game and go home for tea and medals without intense fear of being punished for it. So what lessons have been learnt and what improvements are we really going to see in the new game? First off, let's continue to talk about the speed demon elephant in the room. It's movement. No longer will you feel like you're clearing buildings while also carrying your bags of shopping. You'll instead have the ability to zip about and slide cancel around corners to obliterate that scared noob hiding in the dark, fearing for their life. Playing the multiplayer has absolutely felt smoother, faster and more fluid. Many general movement mechanics like mantling and firing after drop shot into prone are also now quicker. However, if this isn't your bag, don't be fearful of it. When I played MW3, I wasn't daunted by the changes. It instead felt like an aggregation of small improvements that individually don't feel like much, but together they add up to a whole different game. So you won't feel like you're having to learn something new, but there is a whole other world of outplayability available just at the end of your analog sticks, should you desire it. It was only when loading Warzone 2.0 back up again that I really noticed the difference though. I went into the firing range to make a decent class for today's Big Mac gameplay, and when warming up on the dummies pretending I was the movement king, the impact from lack of slide cancel and reloading while sprinting was huge. Instead of finessing into a slide and popping up on targets at will, I found myself signed up to a movement that took an age to get out of. It was like I'd forgotten to cancel a free trial of Apple TV and was now simply held prisoner to it until some indeterminate time in the future. I just want to aim my gun for crying out loud. I'm pleased to say this will all be changed in Warzone 3 with a long list of real improvements at launch, along with even more in future patch updates. In terms of getting around between locations, there are horizontal zip lines in a new map, Urzikstan. Which, to be honest, I thought might have been a bit of a gimmick, but after getting to use them, these are actually really handy and genuinely add to the fluidity of gameplay. Much like the redeployed drones have been great for making your way around, these horizontal versions also reduce the miles spent out in open ground in some laborious running simulator. The colour palette for the new game is pretty vibrant and player visibility is definitely improved, with a more notable contrast between players and the map, which causes them to pop out more. There has already been experiments with red outlines on enemies when you're aimed onto them, so we may see that added in a future update. Between this and the withdrawal of the infamous group skin, tracking enemies should be more about hand-eye coordination rather than you needing eyes of the hawk. 
I know I'm using this infamous skin that would better be suited to a game of prop hunt set in a garden centre, but let's say it was done in the spirit of one last time and delivering you lovely people some good gameplay before it's removed. I say removed and not disappeared because it seemingly disappears all the bloody time in game. That's the problem with the damn thing. Honestly, good riddance. But what about variety to game modes and objectives? Well, there's due to be a whole swathe of limited time modes, events and little tweaks that will hopefully add to the freshness of the game. And before you start worrying if Krampus is coming to ruin Christmas once more, we have yet more evidence that game developers are indeed listening to the fans and also have a sense of humour. Krampus, for now at least, remains on the naughty list. There's too many tweaks planned and additional items of interest to cover here, but the point is, there will be variety. So it shouldn't feel like Groundhog Day for the next year on Urzikstan. <laughs> hey, thumbs up. Moving on to integration. How will we get used to all the new equipment and guns that have appeared in MW3? Well, simply put, the current perk system is staying as it is. But the great news is that several of the new movement buffs are being permanently added to your player, meaning all the movement improvements are being incorporated and you won't have to sacrifice a thing for them. I mean, possibly your relationships with loved ones, school or work might have to be offered up to the gaming gods in exchange for hours upon hours of mega battle royale entertainment, but in game at least, you're good. In what I've been informed is a piece of shrewd marketing strategy and a potential attempt to distance itself from anything Warzone 2.0 related, Warzone 3 will simply be known as Warzone again. Officially at least, anyway. Fans of Resurgence will be pleased to know that Ashika and Vondal are both here to stay, and that after a short break following the 6th of December launch, both maps will be available to play again just 48 hours later. We've been told that all squad sizes are available all season for main BR. So regardless if you're buddying up with your regular squad, a few randoms, or wanting to immerse yourself in both the horror and the glory of playing solo, you won't have to wait for the real-time map rotation or the following week's map playlist. You will be able to experience Urzik Stan in the mode you want to play when you want to play it. This is really huge. I don't know about you, but I get so tired of the map rotations or limited squad sizes. Even when trying to play solo on Almazra for today's video, I had to queue several times for the mode to become available. I definitely didn't fail to record a second place finish like complete techno biff and then get blitzed in the next three games before playing the one that you're watching. Honest. While I now go on to tell you about Verdansk and Rebirth Island, please drop a like on the video if you've been enjoying it as it really helps grow the channel, enabling me to bring you folks more content. So first off, the great news for many is that developers have confirmed in writing that Fortune's Keep will be coming back early in 2024, with Rebirth Island coming back later in the same year. There's no images at this time, but expect them to be modernised for next gen, as with all the maps they've rebuilt from OG Modern Warfare 2 for the current multiplayer. But for news on Verdansk, while it made an appearance in the recent single player campaign, there is no official news on it coming back in the foreseeable future. Fortnite brought their original map back recently and their player numbers went through the roof. Between the developers now seemingly listening to Call of Duty fans and a clear financial incentive, I don't think it will be a case of if Verdansk comes back, but when. Sadly, I don't think we will see it in the next 12 months, but in the meantime, there are lots of things to be positive about. So on that note, what do we think about Warzone 3? I mean Warzone. Feel free to put your own opinion in the comments below. But while I was originally apprehensive about it, my feelings on it are now that we are in for a really good year of Warzone. It feels like we're getting the game many people were hoping for to succeed for Dansk in the first place. But sometimes you need to have it bad to know how good you've got it. And I think that that will be the situation with Warzone 3 following on from Almazra. Will it match the nostalgia of Lockdown Quads with the first Battle Royale experience for many people? I think that's an unrealistic expectation when folks have the options of touching grass, people and real life around them. Don't touch people without their permission by the way. We won't ever quite get the Verdansk days back, but I think if we had the forthcoming game in the midst of the pandemic, this would prove to be the better one. I'm really excited for Warzone and hopefully coaxing back some of my friends to the game for the odd Friday night session. I think safely you can get excited now too if you aren't already. Finally, if Jamie Thornton is watching this, I forgive you Jamie. I'll be bringing you unique, better than meta loadouts suited to all different playstyles here on the channel, as well as more Call of Duty news, tips and fun gameplay. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I get to see you back here soon, but for now, I'm out. feel like I had the right shield at. Never mind. Let's see how this plays out. 15 kills. Really like to shot this guy. Never mind. A little bit one of those situations where if you can hide the longest. Oh no no, absolutely not. It's just the worst scenario. 
there, isn't it? There you go. 11 kills, zero success. If you're not first, you're last. Good luck.